Hi, beautiful people. So nice to see you or virtually see you today. I'm Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief. Um, and as you all know, of course, the other screen is Paul Stamets. Paul and I are going to have a conversation. This is really intended to be more like kind of a fireside chat. Paul has spoken all over the globe. I'm sure you guys have seen his TED Talks and Fantastic Fungi. And so really, you know, this is more about we get an, a, an opportunity and we're so lucky today to just talk to him and ask him all of our questions about everything from conservation to mushrooms for health to his thoughts on the current booming psychedelic movement. Um, so, and then we'll turn it over to um, the audience and we'll have about 30 minutes at the end for your questions as well. And we'll do our best to get to as many of them as we can. Paul Stamets, Stamets excuse me, speaker, author, mycologist, medical researcher, and entrepreneur is considered an intellectual and industry leader in fungi, habitat, medicinal use, and production. He lectures extensively to deepen the understanding and respect for the organisms that literally exist under every footstep taken on this path of life. His presentations cover a range of mushroom species and research showing how mushrooms can help the health of people and planet. His central premise is that habitats have immune systems just like people and mushrooms are cellular bridges between the two. Our close evolutionary relationship to fungi could be the basis for novel pairings in the microbiome that lead to greater sustainability and immune enhancement. And he's written a number of books, which I'm sure many of you have read, Mycelium Running, How Mushrooms Can Save the World, Psilocybin Mushrooms of the World, Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms, The Mushroom Cultivator, and most recently, Fantastic Fungi, um, which of course there was a movie that came out called Fantastic Fungi 2 that features Paul and his work. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Paul. We're really grateful to have you. Oh, on the year, this is, Great, I don't have to show any slides. <laughs> so I can just be, I can be a talking head, but I like this because this format opens up a lot more possibilities for information that people you know, may not have heard or in, in a different context. Let's just start out. I know so many people are such big fans of yours and they know all about your work, but we'd love to know what does a day in the life of Paul Stamets look like? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Well, I wake up, it's not too early. I wake up early. I usually wake up at three in the morning. I go back to sleep, sort of. I'm in this state of um, between fully conscious and fully asleep. And, that, and I have lucid dreams, a lot of them. Um, lately, and actually all my life, I've been having flying dreams. I fly a lot. And at first, I was a kid who was uh, using my windbreaker and then a stormy night and climbing up into a tree and falling. And the windbreaker was a parachute. And those are my dreams, and they've elaborated now. And now I've become very adept at flying. I don't need a windbreaker anymore. I catch the wind. And um, I've, I'm really just wake up in this state of ecstasy with my flying dreams. And it's really strange because they become quite common. And then oftentimes I have these epiphanies of nonlinear thinking. And before I thought, think about the day, what I need to do and all the appointments and things like that, then I have these synaptic junctions that spark. Um, and far my best ideas have come in that dream state. So I get up, I am a coffee drinker, love coffee. So I have my, <laughs> I have my double shot espresso, sometimes more. Um, and then I, uh, I do push-ups and, um, I did 105 push-ups this morning. I've been doing them since I was 18 years of age and, um, I do them four or five days a week, not every day because I definitely, your muscles tear a little bit. And it's very interesting. People can Google this. Uh, I just Googled it to make sure I'm correct here. You can Google this, uh, um, Harvard medical school, push-ups, heart attacks, and it's an extraordinary study. If you do more than 40 push-ups a day, several times a week, over 10 years, you have a 96 or 97% reduction in cardiac arrest. Wow. Think of that. I mean, there's no medicine out there that I know of because I can have such dramatic results. My grandpa died of a heart attack. Uh, my older brother died of a heart attack. So heart attacks are heart disease or cardiac arrest as physicians like to use the word heart attacks. The cardiac arrest is very, very common uh, in my family. And so I want to stick around for as long as possible. So 
but I did my push-ups and then I do very, very deep breathing. And as I do that repetitively 10 or 20 times, and not only do I need it because of so much effort, um, but I get this uh, major endorphin rush. So then I get up start my day. Mm. And do you go to the lab? Do you spend, you know, what does the rest of your day look like in terms of your work and how you divide that up? This is getting really personal. <laughs> um, well, I do take a shower. Uh, <laughs> and then, then I, I go to the laboratory and I check out my, my cultures. Things wake up overnight. Many, many people are listening, know exactly what I'm talking about. You might go to, not be in your laboratory until four in the afternoon, and the next morning you go in there, and things radically changed. So my ceiling is always speaking and growing, and I do a lot of tissue culture at the peak of the mushroom season, so I'm getting many new strains in the culture, like clonum. So, um, and then invariably I ended up in my emails and getting ready and do my normal rituals. You know, we're, we're universal souls right now, you know, all connected together through double blind and through our past interest in fungi and mycelium and mushrooms. And so we're kind of a microverse. We are right now in our own little micro bubble. But I've been in a bubble since March 5th. I have, I, I've seen three people. Um, we have, with some regularity, we have COVID tests that we've taken, and, and so we're comfortable. We can be normal around them. We can have dinner together, things like that. Um, but I really miss hugging people. I just um, I came up to Canada for a week, and on March fifth, and I have returned. I am planning on coming back around December first. Um, there's almost very little COVID up here. If you look at the COVID maps, and Canada's done a fantastic job. They take science seriously. And I want to say, and you know, I know I should not get a political. I respect all people's political beliefs, but I do want to say there is now a spreading of joy, of happiness throughout the United States and even the expats you know, around the world and hope other countries. We are now restoring our priorities back to civility, respect, of, of, of multi-ethnicity. This is what makes the world better, is having this diversity of individuals and cultures. And uh, it's been a friggin', uh, you know, it's been the twilight zone for a lot of us for the past four or five years. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping, we're hoping now this is a lesson on how not to act. So maybe that's the, the good news, you know? So we hope to re return, not just to, prior to this last administration, it's now for us to really ascend as human beings to a higher state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I think much of the, and the mushroom movement is representative of that, this hunger, this need, this community, um, the community of ind individuals that collectively come together to keep a, fa a fabric uh, of shared consciousness. Um, and I think it's our opportunity now to, to have a paradigm shift in the evolution of the human species.